everyone. I'm Adam Brown, and this is Shell Point Today for Monday, August 10th. On today's show, we will hear from Dorothy Munch, a resident who serves on the Southwest Florida Symphony Board of Trustees. Dorothy will speak about her work with the board, as well as talk about the upcoming Chamber Symphony concert this week. Also, we'll head down to the Island Tunnel to see what help might be needed in the UPS shipping room. But first, we want to remind you of tomorrow's Do You Know Your Neighbor event. If you are of Dutch heritage, then this one is for you, as we are focusing on the Netherlands. Come celebrate this vast country rich in history and culture. This event is for all you who are interested in learning more about their fellow Shell Point friends. Light refreshments will be served, and it all takes place tomorrow in the Social Center at 2.15 p.m. On Friday of this week, you'll have the opportunity to learn all about the Technical Support Services team in a special interactive presentation at the Village Church. At the event, you'll discover the latest offerings of high-speed internet and their capabilities, including demonstrations of streaming data devices such as Roku and TiVo, as well as digital video recording devices. Sound confusing? Well, don't worry. It will all be explained in detail at the presentation, where you'll have the opportunity to meet the technical staff, place orders for services, browse hands-on displays, and more. This fun, high-tech presentation will begin at 2.15 at the Village Church. Now, while we're on the subject of technology, we want to let all of you know that we at ShellPoint TV will be undergoing some important technical service updates beginning next week. During this time, all three ShellPoint channels, that's 11, 12, and 13, will be off the air. This means that we will not be providing programming on any of these channels from August 17th through the 23rd. Unfortunately, this is absolutely necessary in order for us to install all of the needed equipment and updates. We want to assure you that our goal is to be back on the air as quickly as possible, and we are scheduled to come back on the air Monday morning, August 24th. The Shell Point Summer Concert Series is in full swing with the next one on August 13th as the Village Church hosts the Southwest Florida Chamber Symphony. And who knows more about this concert than resident Dorothy Munch, who serves on the Board of Trustees for the Southwest Florida Symphony. Let's meet Dorothy now and learn about her work with them and why they call her the Senior Citizen. Have you ever been active for an organization for many years and had such a strong passion that you wanted to share it with others? Well, that's how I feel about our local Southwest Florida Symphony. Hello, my name is Dorothy Bunch. My husband Charles and I are relatively new residents, having just moved into Shell Point in December of 13. I was so pleased to learn of the strong partnership that Shell Point has with our local Southwest Florida Symphony, and even more joyful once moved in to find friends here at Shell Point who shared my same interest. I became involved in 1990 with the Southwest Florida Symphony Society, assisting with their publicity, and through the years worked my way up to the presidency. It was the same year we developed the concept and presented the first designer showcase at the Judd Estate, which was a huge success. This event proved to be a big turnaround for our society. I was then elected to the Southwest Florida Symphony Board of Trustees. I have been serving on the Board of Trustees so long they refer to me as a senior citizen because I have the longest time served. I encourage all our Shell Point friends to become involved with our local Southwest Florida Symphony. You can help support by planning to attend this summer's concert right here at Shell Point on Thursday, August 13th at 7.30. Tickets are only $25, so invite your friends and family as well. As a member of the Board of Trustees, I personally thank you for supporting your local Southwest Florida Symphony. I'm resident Dorothy Munch, wishing you a great day here at Shell Point. It's hard to believe, but it won't be long before the busy holiday season is here. It's during that time that letters, cards, gifts, and all sorts of packages will be shipped to and fro all across this country, and even to other faraway places across oceans. Luckily, here at Shell Point, we don't have to travel very far in order to get these parcel and post items sent on their way. That's because we have a UPS shipping room right here on the island. 
and during the approaching busy season, they could certainly use some help. Let's head on out to the island tunnel now to find out what volunteering in the UPS room is all about. Hi Shell Point, thank you for joining us today. We're here on the Volunteer Corner. I'm Melody Desolet and I'm here with three very special guests. And typically volunteers come at, to the UPS room from 10 o'clock in the morning to 11 o'clock in the morning. So it's a one hour shift that you spend down here. Right. And Mary, typically what would you do it's sort of a day in the life of in the UPS room? Well, we are here to provide a service to Shell Point residents who want to ship UPS. And so if they come in with it already packaged, we weigh it. And then we have a person on the computer that puts it in with the information they provide and it's placed over on the table for UPS to ship out. If they come in and it's wanting to uh, package it, then we will actually find a box that works and we will put the uh, uh, item in and put all the right stuffing in so that it gets shipped safely and uh, tape it up and uh, they provide again the information and our computer person enters that in. So this service is open to whomever chooses right. to shoot. Even ship Shell UPS. Point employees. Wonderful. Sometimes people come in with, with odd shaped items to ship. One time we had a luggage cart. We had to actually make a box uh, to ship that uh, luggage cart in. So John, tell me what different positions there are in the UPS room because we are recruiting for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Correct. Uh, we have openings for packers. We have a couple of openings for people to work the computer. And uh, there are people we need for crowd control when it gets bad at like Christmas time. The regular procedure when someone comes in with a package, we have them fill out a ticket which is given to me to put into the computer. It's really very simple. We put in the date, the name of the person that the package is going to, the address, and then here we put in the person who is sending it, the weight goes here, the amount of the package comes there, and then they just either pay cash or write a check. We don't take uh, credit cards. And you can't have a charge to your ShellPoint account. Okay, so that's important to note. The cash or a check made out to Shell Point. Right. And the computer is pretty much self-explanatory, but for that position, if someone is interested, training would certainly be provided. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I have a, a worksheet that lists the procedure, how to put each thing in, and uh, they certainly could have a copy. Okay, so if someone comes in with a package, we need people to help package it, help label it, right. help tape it, right. help weigh it, mm -hmm. and help input the information exactly. into the computer. Mm -hmm. Well, it's amazing what they bring in. Some stuff, things that they bring is, are, are extremely delicate, so we do a lot of packing for them. And they can come with just about anything, and many of them walk in here with a whole numbers of things in a shopping bag and say, I want to ship this. So we find a box that's quite large and pack it very carefully, wrap the items individually, add a lot of uh, the peanuts and popcorn so that it'll get there safely. And then when it's all done, we have this fancy machine here that really tapes it up and makes it very strong. We triple tape just to make sure it gets there. Uh, probably a whole lot more tape than we need and that may even add, add an extra few ounces, but that's okay. <laughs> gets there safely and that's what's important. That's wonderful. Yeah. Now typically using the UPS service, how long would it take within the United States to ship a package? Depends on where it needs to go. Uh, some places will get in about two days. Other places to the further, the further west you go, the longer it will take. Uh, across the Mississippi River, they say it takes an extra day. I don't know why, but it takes a little longer to get across the big river. And uh, it'll be about five to six days for California. Wonderful. There's another system of shipping, and that's kind of overnight or next day, but that becomes extremely expensive. And you only use that if you're in a very special hurry to get it there. Normally, anywhere from three to six days. Now if they wanted to send something international, where would they have to go for that? They'd have to go to a regular UPS store, 
we can't handle for Canada, for instance, or even for Alaska or Hawaii. They would have to go to a UPS store for that. Wonderful. Now, if you just do a regular package shipped out, the insurance included is up to $100, right. correct? Mm -hmm. Now, if they did choose to buy additional insurance, say it's something that's very important to the family, they could do that here as well? They can. They can insure any amount they want to, but they have to pay extra for it. And somehow or another, they will have to be able to justify the value. They can't just say this is worth thirty thousand dollars if it isn't, nor would they get the thirty thousand if it never got there. They'd have to be able to prove, in fact, the value of it. But you can insure for any amount you choose. You think the package is worth. Wonderful. So volunteers, tell me, do they have fun in the UPS room? Well, I work on Tuesdays, and we do have a lot of fun. We even have a little tea and coffee, but. Uh, we do have a great time. Uh, it can get quite busy, especially around the Christmas season, but generally we have a great time. We deal with most of the affairs of the world and settle many of the problems. But generally speaking, our work is to ship packages for our residents and they seem to appreciate it very much. So a volunteer here is a great job. One hour a week and you get to know a lot of other people. You feel great about being helpful to others and uh, it really is an enjoyable experience. Thank you for joining us here at Shell Point in the UPS room. This UPS room is located in the tunnel on the island. The openings we have are for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday morning from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock. If you do have an interest in joining this wonderful team, please contact me, Melody, at 454-2290. And now it's time to cover all of today's happenings, menus, and Village Church connections, right after this listening to the words preview from David Howenstein. Welcome to an encore performance of a listening to the words program first aired in April of 2013. You may know that saltwater oceans cover about 70% of the Earth's surface, and that each human body is mostly water by weight. But have you ever heard about a man who paints giant pictures of the ocean and also paints dramatic word pictures of surfing the sea? Or Rachel Carson's description of taking her two-year-old nephew down to the sea at night looking for ghost crabs? Or a man falling in love with the James Bond boat which he compared to Sophia Loren? or the significance of a drink of water, as described by Shell Point's Quiet Miracles author, Charles Shepson. You can hear it all and more on the Listening to the Words program, twice each hour every day this week. I'm your reader host, David Howenstein, inviting you to listen to this show by tuning to Shell Point's Channel 12. You can tell those who don't have that Channel 12 that they will find the 30-minute program at www.shellpoint.net and clicking on media and then clicking on listening to the words. Or they can go directly to www.shellpoint.net slash listening to hear this and any of the 199 recorded programs anytime. Thank you for listening to the words. Welcome to the happening segment of Shell Point TV. I'm Bev Chandley, and I'm going to go over the activities that we offer for you here today at Shell Point. We're going to start at 8 o'clock with a trip going out to the Franklin Lock and Dam. Court pickups begin on the island at 8 o'clock, 8.10 for the Woodlands, and 8.20 for Eagles Preserve and Estuary. At 8.45, we have virtual bowling in the Resident Activities Center. At 9 o'clock, we have men's round robin doubles tennis down at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. 9.15, billiards will be played at the Resident Activity Center. Also at 9.15, we have the lollygaggers paddlers going out for their weekly excursion. Pottery with instruction is also available at 9.15 down in the tunnel on the island. The Suzy Q heads out to Matanzas on the Bay at 10 o'clock. And at 10.30, the Disciple Men's Bible Study Group will be gathering in the game room of the Woodlands. At 10.45, we have the table, ten table tennis playing clinic down in the tarpon room. 
11.30, we have Bar Basics, and that's in the health club. And we have a 12 o'clock Mahjong game to start off the afternoon today. That's at the Sable Room of the Woodlands. At 1.15, Samba will be at the Resident Activity Center and will go most of the afternoon. At 1.45, we have a Health Connections class, Balance and Mobility Training Level 1 in the Health Club. At 3 o'clock, we have a Health Connections Pilates Stretch. That's also in the Health Club. And we're going to jump to 6.30 for our last activity of the day, and that is Duplicate Bridge in the Game Room of the Woodlands. Well, I'm happy to see you here today, and we, I will see you back here tomorrow. Menus for Monday. The Crystal Room is closed from today through August 15th. In the Island Cafe for lunch, the special is a mushroom Swiss burger with fries for $7.75. The dinner special is citrus grilled salmon with island rice and green beans for $8.75. And the Palm Grill is closed on Mondays. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Welcome to Village Church Connections. I'm David Pavey, an assistant pastor. On July 24th, 1715, 12 ships packed with treasures from the New World set off from Havana, Cuba for Spain. But a week later on July 31st, 11 of them were caught up in a hurricane and sank off Florida's Atlantic coast. The disaster took the lives of a thousand sailors. Another 1,500 were able to swim to shore. The Spanish began salvage efforts on the ships immediately, and officials at the time reported that the treasure had been fully recovered, which halted the operation. But the Spanish were mistaken. Recent excavations have turned up other valuable items, giving a stretch of Florida's coastline the name Treasure Coast. On June 17, 2015, 300 years almost to the day after the tragedy, Eric Schmidt, who was subcontracted by a salvage company to search for valuable pieces from the wreckage, went diving off Fort Pierce, hunting for treasure while on his annual vacation with his family. Imagine his delight when 15 feet down he began to find one gold item after another in the sand. This led to the recovery of 51 gold coins and 40 feet of gold chain. The most important item being a single coin called a royal, dated 1715, which was designated specifically for King Philip V of Spain. Let's share that moment with Eric Schmidt. Under federal and Florida law, up to 20% of the treasure will be turned over to the state for display in a museum. 40% will belong to the salvage company, but the Schmidt family will keep the remaining 40%, according to the Orlando Sentinel. Not a bad result for a day's vacation. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, Jesus told a story about a merchant who was hunting for treasure in the form of fine pearls, and when he found a pearl of great price, he sold everything he owned and bought it. The treasure was symbolic of the kingdom of heaven. There's a Bible story that illustrates someone who was hunting for and found valuable treasure. It featured a foreign dignitary, the treasurer of Ethiopia, who was returning from Jerusalem to his country in his chariot and reading the prophet Isaiah out loud, searching for the meaning but not understanding. The Holy Spirit sent Philip to the chariot to explain that Isaiah's prophecy concerned the good news about Jesus, that Jesus, who had just been crucified and come back from the dead, gave his life as a ransom so we could know peace with God and enjoy eternal life. The African discovered the treasure. He believed he was baptized. 
and he departed as a missionary to Africa. When we discover and receive God's treasure, peace with God and eternal life, we will value it above everything else. This is put well in the stanza of a Swedish hymn. Have you given up all for this treasure? Have you counted past gains as but loss? Has your trust in yourself and your merits come to naught before Christ and his cross? We may not find gold on the ocean floor, but in the light of eternity, having peace with God is a far greater treasure. Oh, and Jesus had something else to say about treasure. Don't hoard treasure down here where it gets eaten by moths, corroded by rust, or stolen by burglars. Stockpile treasure in heaven where it's safe from moth and rust and burglars. Wherever your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Do you treasure the gift of peace with God and eternal life above everything else? You really should, you know. And thank you for tuning in to Village Church Connections. Thanks for joining us for today's program. Return again tomorrow when Anna Smith of Finemark Bank will talk to us about online banking accounts. And Robin Church of the Island Salon will give us some makeup tips. Until then, this has been Shell Point Today for Monday, August 10th. On behalf of the entire SPTV staff, we wish you a wonderful rest of the day, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.